We're joined in the studio by, with Jerry Paller, or joined by Jerry Paller, who's a licensed uh, agent specializing in health and accident insurance. And life. And life. And you're here to talk about... Uh, Medicare. Medicare. First, I have to say thank you for the cow pie. <laughs> cow pies are delicious. Oh, I got mine for October seventh was oh. my birthday. Oh, oh, you won one! Hey. I won one. Yes. Hey, look look at congratulations! That. Happy Folks, birthday. it is oh, real. It you and, know, and I brought it. I had a big party to go to. It wasn't for me, but it was a party, and I brought it and I put it out, and everybody enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, you, so. you got to share that. So, right in for your cow pie, folks. That's right. There you You're go. Right, right from the horse's mouth. So, um, so um, you said off the air that this is a perfect timing for your visit here. Yes, it is. This is what's called the annual enrollment period. Some people call it open enrollment. It's, it's called a whole variety of things. It is a time of year where if you're eligible for Medicare, and you can be eligible for Medicare by turning 65 or through disability, but if you're eligible for Medicare, you can change your plan at this time of year. It's a good time to sit down and evaluate what your needs are and see if your your current plan really fits with, with what you need. So, if I may, how long is the period, over enrollment period? Uh, it, it starts on October 15th, and it goes through December 7th. So, it's like a couple months. A yeah. couple not, weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's six, short. Six weeks, yeah, right? Yeah, it's short. Seven. So, yeah. yes. take heed, listeners. So Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, our health is changing every year. The plans are changing. Medicare changes. The, the plans are put out by... Uh, private companies, they have to adhere to Medicare standards. And every year they change them. They try, they're competitive. They try and make them better. Uh, there's some very interesting uh, rip, you know, changes to the, some of the plans, some uh, little uh, ripples and in, in ways in, in, in the norm of things, and they, uh, they were approved by Medicare. There are lots of interesting ways to approach securing your health care. Now, uh, let me ask a question. For this next year, our, you know, our current uh, federal government is trying to undo and change a lot of medical things. Is that those correct? are big changes that really don't affect uh, people directly every day right now? We they didn't pass anything. Right. We don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of uncertainty. It, it would affect Medicaid more than it would affect Medicare. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of talk about it, but so far nothing's happened. Okay. When the changes happen, I don't think they'll happen overnight. So, Joey, I'm someone who's say I'm someone who's going to turn 65, I'm 64, I'll be eligible for Medicare in the next year. I should sit down with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm for, I'll give you a card, I've got a couple more years, card but, after, uh... but, um, uh, so my question would be exactly what you said there, but my question would be, what is the first thing you look at as you begin to face that, and um, do you have other health insurance, how are you going to supplement exactly. it? Exactly, exactly. Is that how we sit, you we sit that down, process? We sit down, uh, when we work with people, we do what we call comprehensive Medicare plan. Planning. Okay. Your secure retirement is built on the foundation of good health. You want to be healthy in your retirement, so you want to be able to take care of your health needs. So what I do when I when I sit with somebody is I go review first. First and foremost, I, I look at their health. We do an extensive review, especially what's been going on recently, what your family history is. And then we look at how you're doing, what medications you might be taking. I mean, some people... I don't take any meds, which is wonderful. Most people take a few. Some people give me a whole laundry list. Right. Uh, and that's really a clue to what's going on with your health. Uh, some of the biggest problems I run into are people who have uh, extensive uh, medication needs, especially diabetics who need insulin, which is a, a very expensive medication. And we just work out a plan so that they can afford it. Uh, one of the... Uh, one of the, the, the problems with Medicare, as far as the expense goes, is what's known as the donut hole, where uh, there's a deductible, an annual deductible. Uh, according to Medicare in 2018, it would be $405, which you were responsible for. There are some plans that will cover that deductible for you. It depends on, on, on what, you know, what you want to look at. And then, then you move into the coverage area, but when you get to like $3,275, I think the number is for next year, uh, Medicare shuts off until you get over. Next year, it'll be five thousand dollars. You're completely responsible at that at that point. And then after that, they move into what's called catastrophic coverage. That is that donut hole by 2020 will pretty much disappear. It's something that that Medicare has been working at and and crunching the numbers and seeing how to to make people who fall into the donut hole not suffer the financial consequences. But it's still with us. Okay. There are prescription drug programs, just Medicare Part D, uh, 
and you have to look and plan for what's going to happen. I, I sit with people who are have twenty seven hundred dollars a month for insulin in some cases. That's yeah, a lot that's of money. Amazing. Yeah. That's out of their yeah. pocket. But there are out of that's their pocket. Wow. On so, top but, of what but there are correct. rules that that will help them. For instance, if you know to ask for it, the uh, the manufacturers who contract with Medicare have to give you a fifty percent discount as part of their contract. But those are things you need to be aware of. That's something you need to be because you have to have your doctor ask for it. Right. Okay. If so, if you ask for it, you get it. Uh, and that's something you have to ask for it to get it. But right? nobody's it, going to tell yeah. you. Nobody tells you about right. it. Right. But the donut hole. The hundred percent of the cost counts towards satisfying that requirement. It's another thing you have to know. So all of this, you know, and that's a pretty extreme example, and that's what we do when we plan. And is um, is a lot of these different um, options income eligible based on your income? Certain programs are available to you, or no? It does. Medicare is that's not Medicaid. It's right. Medicare. So income, like if you're a senior citizen, a sen senior citizen on fixed income, it's you can be just as eligible as a senior citizen who has three pensions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yep. there, no there are income. some. If you if you're high income, there are some benefits that get reduced. Okay. But uh, Med Medicare, you pay into it when you're working. Right. You have to work 40 quarters, and that's one paycheck every in every you know f quarter for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, and you qualify, and that pays your Part A premium. And no. then your Part B premium comes out of your Social Security check. Uh, next year will be $134. Uh, uh, extremely rudimentary question. I almost feel ignorant asking it. But Medicare is health insurance for people that don't get it through our seniors that may not work anymore or you know, yeah. get it through their employer okay it's for when you can't get when it you when you're employer. tired well okay. you, yeah if, if you if you have it is the best when I when I went off of my own I was purchasing on the on the individual market because I was the sole proprietor of my business mm -hmm. I was paying eight hundred and ninety five dollars a month for my health insurance when I went on to Medicare it went down to a hundred and nine wow huh you know, hallelujah for yeah, Medicare. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. But, uh, now it's 134. You know, I've been on it a couple of years. And yeah, it's been well, creeping up. you saved a lot. I certainly did. Now, I just want to remind our listeners, we're on the air with Jerry Paller, who is an expert on Medicare. So uh, please call 331-9255 if you have any questions. Uh, the, uh, the other uh, gap, and there are many gaps in Medicare, I, I, depending on Medicare solely, uh, is like living on Social Security. You might be able to get by. Yeah. Right. Uh, if nothing goes wrong, you will. Yeah. Well, coincidentally, uh, we're, we have a caller. Um, j caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning. I have a couple questions to ask. Um, first off, I, okay, I'm on Medicare, and I also have the AARP supplementary insurance because being the fact that Medicare only pays a certain amount, you know, and that would be a lot of out-of-pocket if I had to... I didn't have the supplementary insurance. Okay. The uh, which, which supplement do you have? Do you know? I had uh, AARP, the United Healthcare. Which letter? F. F plan, okay. Yeah. Um, I at first only had the B, and then I switched it over to the F because I do have a lot of doctors I have. That was my next question. The F plan is a very comprehensive plan for people who have uh, a lot of medical issues. Uh, everything's, uh, it, it, all the, the payments are adjusted for the cost of living on a county-by-county county basis. Uh, surprisingly enough, the more rural you are, often the more expensive it is. Uh, some of the, uh, like some of the premiums for the supplements might be cheaper in New York City than they are here. Uh, and that all has to do with, uh, the AARP is, is administered by United Healthcare. They run, they run that program. And uh, they're, they're looking at the cost of delivering medical services in every area where they, uh, where they operate. I know uh, I, for two years, uh, had CDPHP, who I loved, uh, but they left Ulster County because they weren't making money here. Hmm. All right. Does that answer your questions, caller? Okay, but um, I want to know why the doctors don't get paid more. They get paid more in 
the doctors and negotiate with everybody. Medicare, and Medicare is the uh, 600 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, doctors are always complaining about their compensation for good reason. Uh, if they paid more, if they were paid more, you'd, you'd pay more. I think from a policy point of view, and I'm not a policy expert, uh, but I think if we want to deal with the real problems of uh, health care in this country, uh, we have to deal with the cost problems too. It's probably because the uh, the cost of, of living in, in Dutchess is higher. And the reimbursement rates. Yeah, they're yeah. different reimbursement yeah. rates. Different and reimbursement and they're, rates. they're adjusted for various factors. I'm not, I, I, I'm not expert at that level of, of, of Medicare. Uh, I'm more at uh, helping you make the decisions that will affect your health care. Personal. Yeah, I know uh, I have some clients who go to New York City for their health care, and they're very concerned that a lot of uh, doctors, in, and, and they need very you know specialized treatments, right. and they're afraid that their doctors are just not going to take Medicare. Yeah, that's my feelings about that, too. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's a real problem uh, that I can't really solve for you. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for the call. Now, um, I imagine there's got to be millions of Americans on Medicare. Isn't that seventy something million? Wow! Isn't that seventy five powerful million. enough to compel, you know, health and uh, you know, health systems to accept Medicare? I mean, AARP is a huge lobby, and they're heavily involved with United was, Healthcare, okay. and, and they are fighting the fight. I was going to say, how can say, you, right, you can't uh, alienate seventy million people in in this country? That's, right, you know well, that's that's uh, that's a whole political. Play, is that a hardball thing to squeeze yes, more money? Exactly, tactic to gambit or Med- Medicare has contracts with providers, and the providers can take it or leave it. Pretty much. I heard hmm. you ask um, the caller about what letter that she had. Yes. So I'm assuming that um, she was a B and went to F. That the. To me, that says there's five, six, seven, eight different levels of um, plans that you can choose from. Yes. So that has to be overwhelming. Those are Medicare supplements. Right. So that has to be overwhelming to a senior who's going on to Medicare for the first time because now you're talking about six, seven, or eight different plans that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. So you would help them, Jerry, navigate through those different plans and find the one that would fit their needs. Or look at a Medicare Advantage plan, which is another approach. Okay. We have another caller. We do have another caller. Uh, Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. I'm uh, 22 days away from retirement. I'm congratulations from, from turning 65. You made it. Right now, I cover my wife with the family plan where I work. She, in retirement, is covering me with the family plan. And now it's my understanding that when I retire i'm only going to be allowed one insurance for part b how does that work what do you mean one insurance for part d you said or b b b b b as in boy that's that's for your hospitalization Uh, i mean that's for your medical expenses a is for hospitalization and part d is for your prescription drug coverage but uh when you turn 65, if you paid, uh, you know, if if you're eligible for Medicare, you can enroll in Part B. But can you have? You can't be covered by two different health insurance and then Part B, right? You only can be covered. You by can have one. a primary and a secondary. So you can have two. Yeah. Plus Medicare. Well, you, there's original Medicare, and then there are supplements, which will supplement original Medicare. Are there Medicare Advantage plans, which are called Part C, which are privatized? I think, Fuller, what you're asking is right now you're covered by two different plans, your plan from your employer and the plan from your, then you um, submit to your um, wife's employer, correct? So you have two health insurance plans right now. When you go on Medicare Part B, can you have your two health insurance plans? Can you continue with those and go on Medicare Part B? The the transition from uh, into retirement and into Medicare is tricky, and it's difficult with just a a quick, without really looking at the details to figure out what, what a good plan would be, uh, which is why we sit with people and, and, and do the analysis. And what I usually ask for people to do is pull out their insurance card. You know, why do you show your doctor? 
and uh, usually the information on that card will give me a clue as, as to where we're going, but then what the uh, conditions are that of their employer uh, retirement package is, is, is another important uh you know, important element that we have to look at. So there are all these forces coming into play. So, caller, did you get your answer? No. No. <laughs> no, there, I, it, it's, it's a too difficult and too complicated a question to answer. Uh, we're having a, uh, one well, of the yeah, reasons perfect. I'm here. Yeah, take right this down. Great segue. Uh, I'm having a uh, Medicare workshop at the Kingston Library. 55 Franklin Street on Wednesday, November 1st from 6 to 7.30 p.m. You can come. We will go into detail on what Medicare is. We'll accept personal, uh, you know, questions about personal situations. And if you'd like to, we can make an appointment then to have a, a full needs analysis and evaluation. Thank you very much. I will look forward to it. I All hope right. to see come you there. Come on down to the yeah. library. And congratulations on your retirement. Yeah, lucky guy. All right, enjoy. Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, uh, it's it, it, it's personally a lot of this is like n makes me worried, nervous. It should uh, because there's a lot going on. I mean, I'm 51. I got unfortunately a long time before I can retire. But is uh, is there anything that people that are approaching retirement should start thinking about or changing or? Well, as I started you know, to get into before, I said Medicare. Depending on Medicare solely for all your health care is like living on Social Security. There there are gaps to Medicare, things that it just doesn't cover. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's often a difficult thing to talk about because you're talking about people being seriously ill or having accidents and needing extensive treatment, but there are Medicare, sh Medicare shutoffs. Uh, it, will, it will cover your first 60 days of hospitalization. Well, nobody's in the hospital that long anymore, but it only covers 20 days of rehab or, or skilled nursing care. And a lot of people who need more than that. It seems it should be the other way around. 20 in the hospital. Yeah, right, 60. 60 yeah, 60 good days, point, uh, uh, Well, yeah. when you buy the supplements and you look at the Advantage plans, that's what they plan for because they know nobody's going to be in the hospital yeah. for that much. And, huh. and you have your hospitalization deductible, which is $1,316 with Part A. Well, a lot of the supplements and Advantage plans will subsidize that deductible because they know that of all the people that they're insuring, only a certain percentage are going to end up in the hospital. For that right. long, yeah. We have another yeah. phone call. Yeah, we do have another caller. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah. I'm a retired uh, veteran from the reserves and stuff, and I'm covered under the VA, and I'm getting ready to turn 65. Oh, do you have TRICARE? I, will, I do have TRICARE, yes. Okay. And I'm getting ready to turn 65 next July, so i got to start thinking about I know I got to stay. You want me to sign up for Medicare and stuff. Which one would I really need? Excuse me? What's the Medicare? Uh, I would just need the Medicare basic, right? Well, there's original Medicare. You, you, you'd be eligible to sign up three months before your birth month, your right. birth month, and three months after. So you have that seven month window. Uh, you can start your research now. Medicare.gov is, is a vast treasure chest of information, uh, general information, detailed information. You'll get a book from Medicare called Medicare and You, uh, which they will send you. It's about 140 pages, and it has all the details of what the Medicare program is. Uh, and then all of the, the, the insurance companies provide abbreviated versions of that because nobody reads the 140-page book. Uh, that Which, you know, it applies to, it, it tries to give... Uh, Information to every to cover every circumstance, but you don't have every circumstance. You only have your circumstances. Right. So the the, the best advice I can give you is do your research, do your homework, and when the time comes that you feel you're ready to start making decisions, talk to an agent. Right. Uh, the uh, you know it, it's possible to go online at a insurance company and buy a plan, uh, but that's not that's not planning for retirement. That's not planning your your Medicare coverage. Right. Uh, so I'm already uh, retired. I retired back in uh, 09 because I got a buyout from the post office back then. Uh -huh. And I had plenty of years of service and everything else. And when I hit 60, I'd start drawing my military pension. So I was. So it uh, sounds like you have your you're covered for most of yeah. your needs. Sounds like you right. did well. So, uh, yeah, because uh, the military told me I need to sign up for Medicare. Prior to my 65th birthday, because uh, I also got to change my ID card. Correct. I have the uh, Medicaid 
Medicare for that time too. So. Yeah, if if you don't sign up for Medicare and then you just and, and you, a certain amount of time mm-hmm. lapses, there are penalties involved. Right. Oh. So, so uh, but yeah, right now I also use the care that the uh, the VA clinic here in Kingston has, and uh, fortunately for us here in New York. We do not have the uh, nightmare stories that you hear uh, from different parts of the country. All VA uh, care in Kingston is excellent. It is. That's, that's refreshing to hear. Yeah, yeah that's and good to know. I've been dealing with those people since uh, 98, uh, 1998, and I've had nothing bad to say about them at all. That's good to hear. And uh, they've been super. And uh, I want to thank you for being on today with the information, and uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the call. I'm, I'm glad you found it useful. Thank Good. you. So, Joe, what if you're a person that turns 65 and you're still working full time? Do you have to worry about Medicare at that point? You have to have what they call creditable coverage, which means coverage equivalent to what Medicare would provide. Okay. Or then, if you let if you let it lapse, uh, you will uh, have penalties when you try and enroll. So, if you're working full time and you have a um, health ben- um, health benefits at that point, you do not have to um, get onto Medicare at 65. The, the best thing to do in that situation is, is talk to research. HR at where you're yes. working and, okay. and, and find out what the situation is. Uh, yeah, you, you're going to be paying for Medicare if you enroll. Right. And if they're if they're covering that, you know, why pay for your, if you're not using it? But you have to have coverage. Yeah, that that's, makes that's sense. That's the philosophy. Which is part of the mandate, the yes. insurance mandate. That's that, part of the insurance yeah, mandate. Yeah. Um, and now you'll talk about all of this and much more on Saturday at the library. And we correct? will go into uh, parts A, B, D, C in detail. We will talk about supplements. Uh, we will talk about enrollment uh, criteria, and how long eligibility. Is the, um, seminar? I'll talk for an hour, and uh, then we'll take questions and answers. And is there a quest associated with it? No, it's no? free. It's just free? open to the public. Okay, great. We're not allowed to charge. Medicare okay. won't let us. All right, that's fantastic. That's great. Med- Medicare is a very, very highly regulated uh, process system. And what I can and cannot say uh, is scripted. And yeah. I have to I have to adhere to that. It's, it's The government really does a job of monitoring it to ensure that it works for the consumer. Well, yes. well it could almost be a, a monopoly. I mean, with 70 million 75, people, yes, 75 million people on it, that's, you know. Well, there are, I mean, United Healthcare is like a Fortune 6 company. Aetna is a big company. Uh, WellCare is a smaller company. Oh, so there are there, other all the, Yeah, it's, it, there are a lot involved. of private. Uh, with, oh, okay. So this all was in one monolithic insurance. No, it's company. not. Okay, there okay, there okay. are so many variables that can confuse you. I can only imagine. Yeah. As only the federal government can. As only the federal government can. As as I like to say to people, it's a big government program. It's very confusing. Yes, and for seniors, it's very difficult. It really is. It is. is. It's difficult, and but there are seventy-five million people, and each one has a different situation. Sure, absolutely. Exactly. Yes, very true. So it's it's uh, it 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 gives you the opportunity to plan, but you have to do the do the work. Right, right. You know, it's funny because if you work for um, someone, if you work for an employer, normally they give you two plans, pick this one or that one, that's it, and that's all you worry about, mm-hmm. and that's what's available to you, and you pick one or the other, and then all of a sudden, all these plans become available to you, and you really do need someone such as yourself, really, um, to educate you, and you can go online, which is fantastic, but um, that one-on-one with somebody who really knows Medicare in depth, it's so important to make the right decisions, because as you said, your health is very important, yeah. and it yeah. would be um, terrible to have an opportunity to have the proper coverage and not have it, and then have something happen to you, and you would not be be able to take care of your health because of it. I think one of the most common objections I hear from people when I ask them if they they want this assistance is, "I'm okay, I'm set." Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you may be. I, I, I'm not going to tell say you're not, but look at your situation because your health changes. The plans change. Well, the rules change. They may not be set. You may have to be the one to say, "Well, maybe you're not so right. covered. Maybe we should look at this." Or you know, I do that, but people, you know, people don't want to 
be upset because it could be an upsetting subject to talk sure, about, sure. and it's very sensitive. And uh, in my work, I'm, I'm very aware of that. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make people nervous for no reason. I don't want to make, I don't yeah. want to scare them. Yeah. Right? No, absolutely. Yeah. But we got about a minute left. Um, is there? Um, uh, would you, can you share some contact information? For uh, sure. Yeah. The best way to reach me is through email: Gerald G E R A L D dot Paller P A L L O R at Gmail. I, I check my email quite regularly. You can call my personal cell number. I'll give this out over the air because it's a work phone. 917-589-6277. Yeah, well, Jerry, thank you very much. Yes. My pleasure. This is, I, thanks to the callers. I hope people learn questions. something. I just learned how much I, I don't know about it. So, that's what uh, most people learn. Yeah. yeah that's absolutely. what I learned when I took this job. There you go. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. Much. And uh, I wish you well. Thank yes, you very thank much. You, Jerry.